These are actual photos from Reddit of attempts at replacing joysticks on PlayStation and Xbox controllers. Names have been hidden to protect the guilty. In all seriousness, I bear no ill will towards these folks who just wanted a better joystick experience on their $70 controllers that are now exhibiting stick drift because Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo use cheap potentiometers that wear out over time. Hall effect sensors cost an extra dollar or two and by and large do not have these drift problems. Replacing controller joysticks really should not be your first soldering project. The learning curve is steep and it is very easy to damage the controller circuit board. If you can practice soldering on something else first, like a cheap soldering practice board or kit, I highly recommend it. Most of the advice on controller joystick replacement tells you you must have a $200 desoldering vacuum pump or a hot air reflow station or those horrible blue solder suckers. That well, today we won't be using any of those. We are going to replace the joysticks of a PlayStation 5 controller with no special tools while using techniques that reduce the chance of damaging your circuit board. So what do you need? You need a soldering iron with temperature control and you will need leaded solder. You can get the 0.8 millimeter solder. I think that's a good size, but you can get bigger or smaller. You do not want a spool of the giant solder they have in the plumbing department at your home improvement store. You need desoldering braid. The premium stuff has flux already in it, but most of it does not. You will need flux. I prefer the gel stuff and you will need tweezers. It is important to note that this video is not for someone wanting to learn soldering long term. If you want to learn best practices for soldering, please go watch some of the other fantastic videos out there on soldering. We will be destroying the existing joysticks in the process of removing them. This method guarantees an intact, undamaged, clean circuit board that we can then add Hall Effect joysticks to. You will need a standard soldering iron with a medium conical or chisel tip and temperature control. There's a lot of advice out there telling you you have to have a giant flat chisel tip to transfer tons of heat to the circuit board. I disagree. A medium tip with the iron set to the correct temperature offers more control with less chance of damaging the PCB. Again, if your desoldering braid is the basic stuff and doesn't have flux in it, most doesn't, you will need to liberally add flux to the copper braid before you use it. Pro tip, if you touch the soldering iron to your copper braid and nothing happens and you get no smoke, it needs flux. The biggest danger in this project is stress, and I don't just mean your stress. Most of the damage I've seen on controller circuit boards has been caused by mechanical stress of pulling, pushing, scraping, and yanking to try to get the joystick off the board. At no point in this project should you be applying any significant downward or side-to-side -side sliding or pulling pressure on the parts. You should allow gentle pressure and heat to do all the work in this job. If you look at a cross section of the solder from the end, you'll see the flux right in the middle. When you melt solder, the flux melts too. In those few seconds, the flux is cleaning the site where you're about to solder, guaranteeing a good connection. The smoke from flux is not pleasant, so you will want to have a small fan or filter if the smoke bothers you. Solder is not glue. When I see people starting to solder, I see them try to melt some solder onto the iron, and then after a few seconds, they'll try to dab the solder onto the parts to transfer the now dry solder into the joint. It never works. It makes a mess, and the connections are poor, and worse, you're burning off the flux before it can do its cleaning job. We'll get into this more later, but the correct order of operations is you take your soldering iron, you touch it to the board and the wire, and then you feed solder in from the side. The flux goes in there and cleans and prepares the area and then the solder starts to melt. And then now the solder can flow easily because of the flux. And so that solder is gonna find all the nooks and crannies. It's gonna get down into the hole it's going to follow up the wire and then you pull the soldering iron away and you have a beautiful joint. Is leaded solder safe? Under ROHS standards, circuit boards sold to the public must be assembled with lead-free solder. However, lead-free solder works against us as it requires a high temperature and is frankly a pain in the butt to work with 
as it does not want to melt and it doesn't behave nearly as easily as leaded solder. One of the shortcuts we will be doing is actually flooding and replacing the lead-free solder with leaded solder on the joystick points. This will make it much easier to remove and replace. Just a note, the smoke from leaded solder is not lead, but the flux melting. As long as you wash your hands after soldering and don't lick your fingers, you should be good. Leaded solder will allow us to work quickly and not beat the crap out of our circuit board. Another common concern I see on Reddit and forums is oxidation. People see the tip of their soldering iron go black or dark gray and worry that it's ruined. Yet if you just touch it to a wet paper towel or a sponge, it'll be shiny and new again. I don't know how these went out of style in the soldering world, but when I'm soldering, I always use a wet sponge or a wet paper towel. Just one or two swipes and the iron is clean again. You don't have to buy tip tinner, which is just solder balls saturated with flux. To clean the tip, just feed it some solder, wait a few seconds, and then wipe the tip again. And finally, what is a cold joint? It is important when you pull the soldering iron away that you don't move the parts for three or four seconds afterwards. If you move the parts while the solder is cooling, you will end up with cavities inside the solder where there's movement and there's no connection. This is a cold joint. All right, enough backstory, enough preparation. As Voltar would say, strap on and let's get ready. Depending on whether you are replacing a PlayStation 4 or 5 controller, Xbox, Switch, or other controller, the procedure and instructions will be different on how to disassemble the controller and how to get to the PCB. Every soldering iron and tip is different, so you will need to adjust your iron until you get the right temperature. As a starting point, if you have a large chisel tip on your soldering iron, set the temperature to 500 degrees Fahrenheit or 260 Celsius. This is just a little above the melting temperature of lead-free solder. If you have a medium tip, try a higher temperature, 600 Fahrenheit or 315 Celsius. You should be able to touch the iron to the solder for a few seconds without it turning gross. If it turns black quickly, turn down that temperature. If it takes more than three or four seconds to even melt, turn the iron up. First up, we need to replace the lead-free solder with leaded solder. To do that, we are gonna flood each joint with solder. Then we'll use a solder braid to remove as much of that solder as possible. We will be taking advantage of the fact that the joysticks are actually made up of four different components. Two round potentiometers, a button, and a support framework to hold the joystick steady. We're going to make our lives a lot easier by removing these components separately. Now that we have bent the potentiometers out of the way, we will use more solder to heat up the legs of that potentiometer and then gently pull it through from the bottom.
Now to make our lives even easier, we are going to cut off the four legs of the joystick scaffold from the top side of the circuit board. This way, all we have left to desolder is the four button pins underneath. You want to be careful here not to cut off any components that are important and just focus on cutting those four legs. Now to make our lives even easier, flood those pins and quickly go back and forth between them to work the button free. I recommend clamping the reverse tweezers onto the joystick and turning the circuit board over so that you have some gentle gravity pulling on the joystick without yanking. This makes it a lot easier so you just heat up the four button pads and the joystick will fall off on its own accord. Now one thing that can be a little tricky is we still have those little broken legs in the holes of the circuit board. There's a few different ways you can do this, but you just wanna be really careful. If you have a small soldering iron tip, you might be able to heat up that leg and then push it through. And then when you flip over the board, you'll be able to just heat it up and grab it. You can also heat up the leg and then quickly use a pair of tweezers and push through that leg. I have not had any success using a bunch of desoldering braid. There's always gonna be just enough solder in there that it's gonna hang onto that leg for dear life. You gotta get these legs out of here because you're gonna be putting in the new joystick. Now that we've got everything off of the board and we have carefully used the solder braid to remove as much of this solder as possible, uh, we can go ahead and clean the board using isopropyl alcohol, Q-tips, and a toothbrush. Now that I've used all the isopropyl alcohol and the Q-tips and the toothbrush and all of that, hopefully your circuit boards look as clean as this. As we talked about earlier, soldering is not just gluing two parts together with a third substance. The solder actually becomes an alloy with the two parts you're soldering and you end up with a molecular bond. We've done all the desoldering. Now it's time for the soldering process. Insert the new joystick into the holes, making sure everything lines up. Now we want to touch the soldering iron to the joint. Make sure it's touching both the pad and the wire poking through. 
We want to feed solder in from the side until there is solder in the hole and some on the surface. And then we want to pull the solder and the soldering iron away. Ideally, you want to do this whole process in about five seconds. And when you're done, it should look exactly like a Hershey's Kiss. Now we continue to make our way around, soldering each of the 14 pins for each joystick. Once we've replaced both joysticks, we put the caps on the joysticks. That's very important. First time I did this, I did not put the joystick caps on and I thought I could put it on later. You can't. Now it's time to reassemble the controller. Take your time and there's really good videos on this. Again, this is not a how-to on how to take the controller apart or put it back together. This is all about the soldering. You do need to solder the four wires on each side which connect to the motors. These are your rumble motors. You might want to take a picture with your phone just so you can remember which way they go. Green, yellow, black, red. Again, this will be different for Xbox or for Nintendo. So I fully expect to get blasted in the comments because I'm showing the wrong way to solder. But if this video helps just one person avoid a controller horror show, and instead they successfully upgrade their gaming controller to new joysticks, I will have accomplished my goal and I'll be happy. Once I had the controller back together with the new joysticks in it, everything snapped into place, all satisfying. I ran over to the computer and connected with a USB cable and go to this great website which lets you calibrate the controller. You just go through step by step and you set your extents, your up, down, left, right, and then you do the sampling of the data to get your correct analog uh, controls. And once the calibration was complete, of course I have to go and test it out. So I fired up my PlayStation and logged into a favorite game and made sure everything works and everything seems to work. So hopefully you have the same results. If you don't, by all means, leave a comment, send me a message. I will respond if I can. Oh, and hey, some channel business. Two last things. First, I apologize for my voice and my scratchy throat. I'm getting over a horrible bug and just, I could not wait anymore to record this voiceover. And also, I did notice that I've jumped from 50 to 3,000 subscribers and that my video on PCB prototype mistakes got like 185,000 views. I could not believe that. I've been getting emails from JLC and PCB Way wanting to do sponsorships. Pretty crazy. Anyway, I just did a video that I wanted people to have information about. And funny enough, I have a script ready for a follow-up video. 10 more mistakes. So I will definitely uh, get that done. With everything going on in China right now, and we're not doing a lot of PCB orders lately, uh, I should have time to work on that video soon. But anyway, thank you so much for watching, and hopefully you got something out of this.